Hey everyone, I'm Tyler Weissong. Thanks so much for checking out my channel today. I really do sincerely hope you are all being safe and are healthy right now in this pandemic that we're all in. I definitely want to be there for you in this time, at least in terms of giving you some vocal tips and advice and you know why not make the best of this situation when you have to stay at home you might as well be learning something and using this time wisely so with that being said let's go ahead and jump in a question that I've been getting uh, probably for a couple years to be honest with you is how do you go from a lighter mixed voice sound to a full one or a chestier sound. Or some people even call it like a belt mix sound. I figured it's about time for me to make a video on this and just clarify some things. All right, so I'm gonna do my best to give you some demonstrations and uh, describe what I'm feeling when I uh, go between lighter sounds and fuller sounds. The question is, how do you go from this type of sound ma, 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 to that one where I kind of just let it loose uh, uh, on the gas pedal? Here's the thing. This is kind of working in reverse, but you should actually be able to crescendo and diminuendo on those pitches, meaning start soft, get loud, get soft again without disconnecting. And that's actually huge because if you're disconnecting, you probably could do it both ways to be honest with you, but if you're disconnecting, you're probably starting in more of a head voice, which, which is okay, but eventually you wanna to learn to be in more of a light mix. So here's, here's, the, here's an example of that. You should basically just be able to go between them without there being any ah, yodels or <laughs> uh, anything weird like that. I want to just jump straight into the foundation, foundational principle of what I think a lot of us need to work on. Now, when you're thinking about the voice, there's there's these basically three systems, your breathing system, your voicing system, your vocal cords, and then the resonators, the, the, re the resonance um, that you feel. Now, ultimately, they all are one, <laughs> basically, because they, they work uh, together and they actually do influence each other. But if you're just having a problem and you just can't seem to figure out how to get from a a light sound to a full sound, sometimes it's worth diving into these subsystems independently and just messing around with them and bringing your attention a little bit more focused and seeing if you get a better result. So the system that I want to talk about right now today is in fact actually the breathing, but it's not really how you are exhaling per se or breathing in per se it's it's more about the respiratory muscles and how you're using those so what I want you to do let's first experience the elastic recoil of your lungs and that's basically your lungs fill up like a balloon and if you just let them go because the pressure inside of your lungs is greater than the atmospheric pressure on the outside the lungs will just return back to neutral. So just uh, sit nice and tall for me and take a normal breath in and then just let it go. So that's, you're not really trying to like blow or support or do anything weird. You're just allowing those lungs to equalize. Now, do the same thing, but this time round your lips as if you had a straw or a very tiny ooh and uh, release the air in the same way. Now all of a sudden, there is a resistance up here so that air cannot escape as quickly. And because of that, you feel a little bit of backing up down in your torso area, uh, by the lower ribs and maybe even in the abdominals. But it's not like a conscious 
flexing or anything like that, that will just close your throat. So now the next thing is to just um, add, your, add your voice to it so you can experience what this backing up feeling uh, while voicing feels like. So breathe in. You feel like you're just leaking that air out. My ribs feel like they're expanded. They don't, they're not huh, collapsing on me immediately. Um, my chest is staying tall and my shoulders are staying back and down. Now that is the foundation for singing in general, but definitely going from light to full. You can think about breathing in terms of accelerating air versus decelerating air. I first heard about uh, breathing in this way from a brilliant author, Claudia Freelander, uh, in her book, Complete Vocal Fitness. Great book for any singing nerds like me out there. So here's the thing, when you breathe in and you stay suspended at your ribs, as opposed to giving in immediately, giving in that way is a way of accelerating the air. Here's the thing, if you wanna be loud, then you're gonna to have to valve off at the vocal cords, which is decelerating the air. But if you're blowing way too much air or accelerating too much air too quickly at the cords here, it's going to be too much. Your vocal cords are these small little things about the size of your thumbnails, and it's just gonna to be too much air for them to hold back. But if you can help maintain some of that subglottic pressure, which is you know, the pressure between uh, below your vocal cords by maintaining a little bit of a, a suspended rib cage while you're going from light to full, not letting this change. Now I feel my abdominals start to mobilize a little bit. I'm not consciously thinking about which part of my abs that I'm flexing. But they do start to mobilize when you sing fuller. It's just what's gonna happen. But I'm trying to resist it with keeping my chest tall and my ribs expanded out as they were on the inhale. I think this is a big key. I've made a video regarding this topic uh, a little while ago, but just a reminder, if you're having a very t uh, tough time doing this, you can always put your arms up over your head like this and your hands are touching like this over your head and that lifts your ribs and opens them up as, as in the way that I want them to be open. Then you can slowly bring your arms down like this, but maintain your rib cage height and your chest height. Start with that. Start with getting in the right posture so that you have the best chance of actually doing this right because you're going to have a very difficult time doing that hunched over like this. It's just not going to work as well. That's one thing, which is breathing, which is one big thing and we should all be working on that. But sometimes due to previous training that you've had, and I know for me, something that uh, I was taught, and it's not wrong, but is the low larynx technique. Now, I do believe your larynx should be neutral, but I also believe that when we instruct singers to keep their larynx down, they start pushing it down with the root of their tongue, and that is an impossible posture to make the sounds that I'm making up there, at least for me. Maybe you can do it, I've had a very difficult time in the past trying to make big full sounds that I could sing with in this stuffed up, pushed down larynx position. It just feels very unnatural. So uh, there's actually some good evidence that as you sing higher, the pharyngeal walls should narrow or the throat should actually narrow a little bit. And if you're trying to hold the larynx down, then the pharyngeal walls will not narrow. So one thing that I do with people uh, co constantly is this little um, exercise. You're gonna say, ah, as in happy birthday, and it's gonna be kind of in those uh, pharyngeal sounding twang type of exercises. But what I want you to do is just kind of play with it and say, ah, that type of ah, like that, and say, ah, 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 and that right there, I kind of let it ah, 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 
Now that's kind of leaning toward a pharyngeal, ah, you know, type of a twangy mix sound. But if I get there, I can easily make that um, more normal by just changing the vowel to say eh. And you know, there you go. And that feels pretty dang easy, and that's a high C. I will tell you though, I'm being mindful of not immediately collapsing. I'm trying my best not to. I'm, I'm doing my best to stay tall. And look, I don't want you to be rigid. But here's the thing. So many of us have habituated the posture of this. And you know, whether that's because you're playing piano or guitar, but if you want to sing these epic high notes and you want them to be full, you have to take on the posture of, of a person who's about to be very expressive. It's really hard to make very high intensity expressive sounds when your body posture is saying otherwise. Everything is connected and definitely there's a psychological connection as well, but certainly getting in a good alignment helps your instrument tremendously. Okay, here's like a quick song example. If you come up here and you're in this lighter mixed place, try doing this. Try going from a to then punching it a little bit with a bub, but without losing your expansion. So right there, you know, I'm just demonstrating in a few other keys that it's basically the same thing. Once you find that full mix, for the most part, you can then continue in it. There's gonna be modification, not modifications, my subtle migrations. Because remember, we have these harmonics that are kind of shifting around that are interacting with our formants, but once, it, it, and, and as well as, you know, we have the, the vocal cords that are doing certain things. Um, because once we get up to like, say, F sharp, for guys, women, usually around like A or B flat, you're in the mixed voice resonance. So the resonance is basically, it's there, and then you just track that resonance up uh, to, you know, for men, like definitely these high, this high C, I and mean, some can go up to Ds. And women, you know, F for F sharp. You can track that mixed voice resonance up there, give or take the voice quality uh, or the voice type. There are mechanical things that happen as well. There's mechanical migrations, there's resonant migrations, and then you can even think about emotional migrations. Up high, a lot of times thinking of crying or sobbing or sometimes even just joy, singing. And just, you know, being kind of, uh, uh, just going for it. And if I were to just sing ma, <laughs> um, joyfully like that, uh, just spontaneously, what would happen? Try it, see what happens. But you can use different emotions or expressions in different parts of your range. And I'll talk more about that soon in other upcoming videos. Uh, but today, I just wanted to give you a bunch of examples of me singing uh, notes up here. I just wanted to be very candid today and talk to you, and have a discussion, and give you some things to think about and hopefully answer some questions for those of you who have been asking, how do you go from a light sound to a full sound? And hopefully I just shown you um, in this video. If you did like this tip, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit subscribe to my channel so that you'll be notified when I make more videos like this and I got more coming your way. So stay inside, stay healthy, and stay tuned. Until next time.